Okay, many of you guys had wanted a um, just a quick walkthrough video of actually reconstituting peptides and then um, filtering and several people had asked about venting. Um, we're getting ready to be making some kits to send out and some of those will include um, materials to vent with and some won't for people that don't want to do that. But anyway, the goal of this whole process, again, is to make sure that um, we filter and make as clean as possible everything that goes into your final reconstituted sterile vial. So um, good aseptic technique is important. And one of the best things you can do up front is have a bottle of 70% isopropyl alcohol and in a spray bottle, spray everything down, wipe it good with a paper towel, let it evaporate for a second, um, wear some good rubber gloves, spray those down with alcohol as well and wipe those really good so you know you want to wash your hands before doing this and have everything as clean as possible a lot of people have asked what is this in the background and this is actually um it's called an ffu it's got a 99.99 um percent hepa filter that filters down to 0.03 micron so it's almost the same as the syringe filters we're using so it makes uh air that comes out of this really clean so you're working in a really clean space I got this one from Clean Rooms International in Grand Rapids, Michigan. There's a lot of places you can buy them. You can DIY them too. Um, just look for DIY laminar flow hood on YouTube and um, on Reddit. There's a lot of um, examples. So anyway, I'm getting all the stuff we kind of need out here and it's probably a little more than we need. So I'm just gonna throw some stuff out here and go through what we've got. Um, Obviously, we're going to need um, a syringe, um, which is a Lorlock syringe, which has got uh, this Lorlock connection, uh, which allows you to put these Lorlock needles in. We've got a couple of different sizes here. We've got 5 8 The gauge on these is 25 gauge, which is good for doing reconstitution and filtering. Um, they're big enough where they're fairly um, rigid, although... Um, these are inch and a half and they do get a little bendy, but there's a reason we use them, which I'll show you later. Um, and 25 gauge just allows plenty of flow through there. It's big enough to stay um, rigid, but it's small enough where it doesn't take a core or a little piece out of your injection port when you pierce it. So here we've got just a new sterile vial. This is where our reconstituted peptide is going to end up. And then we've got two lyophilized vials of peptide. Um, which, uh, you know, have a cap on here. One of the first things, oh, well, let me go through what else we've got here. We're gonna need, we've got syringe filters of varying sizes, which I'll go over in a minute. And then uh, some alcohol prep pads. So we're also gonna have um, bacteriostatic water, which is what we reconstitute with. So normally these come with uh, just a cover, like a little lid on it, like these do. These don't, but the lids are not really super important anyway. They keep dust off, but you still want to clean the tops of all these lids before you do anything. So you would pop this off so that you end up with this. And on these, you're gonna pop them off as well. And even though those are, you know, technically brand new and that lid was just popped, those lids are not sterile. Everything inside of this file is sterile, supposedly, which was what we're hoping for, but we're filtering just in case it's not. And so we want to wipe these down and then you want to give everything, all the injection ports, after you wipe them down, you want to give them a second for the isopropyl alcohol to evaporate and kill everything. You always want to use 70% isopropyl, not stronger and not weaker. That's the best for killing stuff on surfaces like this. So um, the filters we're using, just to get this really quickly, these are um, four millimeter, 0.2 to micron pes filters the four millimeter is the size of the disc here that's the um, housing for the filter um, that's four millimeters in diameter um, we've got some other sizes this is a 13 you can see it's bigger a 13 millimeter these four millimeters are great for filtering up to about four or five um, milliliters of the most common peptides um, when you get into peptides that may get thick or gel like AOD, um, you may want to go up to a 13 millimeter. It's got a biggest surface, bigger surface area. So there's less, um, you know, clogging with the same amount of liquid push through, or if you're doing more than say five 
milliliters of uh, filtering with just a normal peptide. If you get into oils or anything bigger, you'd want to go with something even larger. This is a 25 millimeter diameter filter. Um, you want to stay with the smallest filter that you can use for the task that you're trying to complete because you get what's called holdup volume, which is just the amount of solution that stays in that housing. And so obviously in this, you've got about 0.07 milliliters of holdup in a four millimeter filter that jumps up to about 0.28 milliliters in this 13 millimeter filter. And then, you know, it gets really huge when you get into these bigger filters. Just for clarification, those are both PES filters, which are great for um, peptides. This is a PTFE um, hydrophobic uh, filter, which is good for oils, um, but not so much for peptides. I just wanted to show you guys the size on that thing. So uh, anyway, the first thing we're going to do is now that we've got these uh, tops wiped off, so we're going to take a needle. We'll take one of these small ones just to start out. This is a 5 eighths. We're going to draw some um, bacteriostatic water and put it in with the, the lyophilized um, peptides there and reconstitute them. So the 5 eighths needles are good for drawing things in inverted when your um, bottle is upside down like this. We want to equalize the pressure and we're going to put about one milliliter in each one of those vials. So we want to go to two milliliters on this three milliliter syringe. I'm going to push. Um, actually, I like to put the air in with it right side up so you don't push the air through the liquid, which can make bubbles, which are a little uh, frustrating to deal with sometimes. Um, now I'll draw back out the liquid, which is bacteriostatic water, to two milliliters here. I'll go a little over so I can kind of get exact here. And I've got this clean workspace. Um, everything's wiped down. So I'm not going to worry about getting, if I drop a little of this liquid, this should technically be sterile anyway, but um, I don't mind it on this workspace. Everything's clean. All right. Now I got to be careful when I put this in here because this file is likely under a vacuum, which means it's going to suck this liquid in as soon as I put it in. And I'm splitting it into two different vials. So I got to kind of hold it back to make sure it, okay. Yeah. Well, this one's not super under vacuum, so it's less of a problem than I thought it would. But just so you know, a lot of them have got a lot of vacuum and it will really just instantly suck it in there. This one didn't. So it allows me to push it in there. I'm to one milliliter and I'm going to pull that out. And then I'm going to put the other half into this one. Most of the times you don't kind of want to cross, um, the needle into different vials, but since all this is gonna be filtered anyway, it's not such a big deal. So, all right, you kinda gotta, you end up using a lot of needles and if you think it out, you can use less, but needles are so cheap that a lot of times it's easiest just to sort of use a new one for almost everything. So anyway, this is gonna go pretty quick, um, but what I'd wanna do here is just pause and let this um, dissolve for about 10 minutes so I'm going to pause here and you want to, you don't really want to shake these, but kind of swirl them and um, roll them just to make sure that that bacteriostatic water has gotten everywhere um, in the vial and then just let that sit for, I'd say at least 10 minutes. So this is the only break we're going to take in this video, but I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. These have been sitting for yeah maybe 15 minutes or so and you can see. When you first um, put the backwater in there, there's a lot of like foam and gritty looking um, stuff. Now you've just got the most minor bit of bubbling right there, hardly anything. So those are ready to go. You definitely want to let this sit for a little while before you do anything else. So now um, we were talking before about venting. I'm going to use one of these 5 8 uh, needles for this, but essentially you've got nothing in this vial right now and we're going to put you know two milliliters of stuff into a vial that will hold about four milliliters so that's you know half the volume of the, whole, the vial is going to be in there and all the air that's in there is just going to get compressed um this isn't completely a must but um i like doing it and a lot of people do as well is just to um 
put a vent in there that allows air to come out. Now, most of the air will be coming out, not going in, but I'm gonna use a filter on this vent just so um, you, you may actually get some little eddies of air that pull back inwards. Um, and so, like, normally you don't wanna to touch these filters or these needles too much, but um, since this is all gonna be on the outside and there's not gonna be any fluid that goes through these, it's okay to kinda of use your fingers a little more than you normally would, especially since we've got isopropyl coated fingers. So I'll be able to keep track that this is the vent needle, but it's going to be the only 5.8 I'm going to use. So we'll just stick it in there. So now any air that comes in has got to go through that filter. So it's getting filtered. And uh, you can just use a needle if you want, but um, it sure doesn't hurt to have a filter on there. I like to, to do it that way. So now we're going to get a new needle for the same um, syringe that we're using to do the, um, the reconstitution. And I will put that on there. And I'm just gonna draw up into the syringe um, everything that's in these vials. I'm gonna, I always like to put approximately the amount of air into the vial, but I'm gonna be drawing out. So I don't wanna get down in the liquid. I just pierce the top there. And so I'm gonna push the air in. And then the reason I like these inch and a half needles is it allows you to get down into uh, the bottom corner of the vial to draw your your peptide solution out and it just lets you get everything so you can kind of spin it around a little and maybe even spin the needle to get a different side of the bevel of the needle and you can see you know it's completely empty at that point you can also use those 5 8 needles and draw um, your peptide inverted like this but you're constantly having to pull the needle down until just barely the last little tip of it is in when you're done so I've got some air in here. I'm gonna get that down to one milliliter and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna get up over the liquid and push that air in. It doesn't matter if these mix because they're gonna be mixed in the vial anyway. So now I'm gonna do the same thing here and draw up everything that's in this vial. And obviously you can just do this with one, but I know some people like to um, reconstitute more than one at a time. So now we've got all of the reconstituted peptide out of those vials and into the syringe. And so now we're gonna filter. So for this, oh, it's just a little right there. Okay, for this, um, we are going to use a new needle. And we could use either the 5 -8s or the inch and a half. Actually, I think I will use another 5 eighths here. It'll just be a little easier to put it in, but you could use either. It doesn't really matter on this because you're just essentially shooting it in. Maybe a little hard to do with gloves on. This is not a very dramatic part of the video here. Okay, there we go, I got that. Now, the other thing that we're gonna need here is another syringe filter. This is the one that's actually going to be filtering the peptides. Now on this one, you do not want to touch this. Leave it in the case there. Put that lure lock on and kind of grab in the case and turn on tight. Install that nice and tight. On this, one thing I like to do is being really careful to try to not touch the inside of that. It's actually really critical is kind of flip that out. And the only reason I do this is so that I can push this on really super tight and obviously be very careful about the end of that needle, especially if you're using the inch and a half one. But if you don't push that on tight, you can get a little leak right there. So the reason I was saying you don't want to touch the inside of the needle is it's on the output side of the filter. So that is in your uh, fluid path where everything needs to be sterile. So you obviously need to be really careful right there. So now all we're going to do is puncture that. And we're just going to filter all of this through. This is about two milliliters. You'll be able to kind of see it going in. This is easy to push. It, um, it's really easy to filter two milliliters. And um, like I said, you could probably pretty easily go up to five milliliters um, here. So it makes it especially easy since that's vented, like all that extra air and that pressure is g going out of the side. So now one final thing I can do here is because of that holdback volume, you need to be really careful of the way you... Um, kind of let this sit and know that our uh, fluid filter is on the right. I'm going to finally just take 
one more needle and uh, this is for flushing uh, peptides through that filter. Right now we've got our solution with a little bit of peptide in it. Like I said, about 0 0.07 milliliters. Uh, and so just to flush that through, if we do a little bit over 0 0.07, you need to calculate for this in your um, calculations uh, of how much fluid we're gonna have here. I actually kind of didn't get very much there. This is what I was saying about that being a little bendy, but let's take, let's just go, now again, this is going to drip, so I'm not concerned about that, but I want to go with about a quarter of a milliliter there. So I'm going to take this needle off and go back into the filter, and then I'm just going to push it through. And what that is going to do is... Um, just that little bit will have pushed most of our um, peptide solution through there and left in that whole back volume just backwater at that point. So that's pretty much it. We're done, uh, and we can discard all this stuff. Obviously, put these needles in a sharps container, but that's your reconstituted and filtered peptide.